guys, today's video is sponsored by the OneFootball app. If you haven't done it already, head down to the description before this video starts, click the link and download it completely free of charge on iOS or Android. Hello everyone and welcome to episode 7 of the Chot and Athletic Career Mode. Now as you can see the first game is against Rochdale away from home. It's the 27th of October I believe this is the last game of the month. Now in the last episode you will probably remember that there was a bit of a switcheroo in terms of our fortunes because before last episode we were really struggling playing games and we were really really prolific on the Sims. However last time we did lose two simulated games to Blackpool and Carl Robinson's Oxford. We did also win one simmed game against I believe Walsall and we also won the one game that we played we won it 1-0 it was at the Valley and it was against Barnsley we can see down here we are currently sitting third below Sunderland and Scunthorpe in League One so we're doing all right 15 games played plenty more football to be played now let's get into this first game against Rochdale here we go then nice distinctive kits which is what we love to see when we play the games we have made a slight change I think only one or two changes to the starting 11 we will go over both starting 11s though in just a moment. Here is the Rochdale lineup then. Lillis, the number one in goal between the sticks for Rochdale. Rafferty, Williams, Magahi, and Delaney are at the back for Rochdale. In midfield, they've got Perkins, Rathbone, and Clough. Ian Henderson and I think that's Arabas up front number 13 and I've also missed out uh, the left back which I think is done so let's turn our attention now to the Charlton lineup here we go then Dylan Phillips in goal Deek Steele and Naby Saar comes in next to Jason Pierce at centre back two left footed centre backs I'm not worried about it Lewis Page at left back Lenez and Fosu as always on the wings and it's actually a mistake I meant to put a Rebo in there um, but Darren Prattley the number 15 does continue his role next to Forster Kasky Lyle Taylor and Veta Kelly up front Carlin Grant still absolutely but I believe did make the bench for this one so we may be able to bring him on for the last few minutes if we need him here comes Lewis Page Lewis Page with a lot of space to work into there's a run here from Lyle Taylor Lyle Taylor oh just drags the ball wide of the post and that could have been a really nice early lead for Charlton unfortunately the accuracy just about off as you can see there in the replay for Lyle Taylor and he's done a few of those where he just doesn't quite manage to get it on target but fair play. Forced the Kaski over here to Vettikelli he's waiting for somebody to run for him and Vettikelli's actually gonna have to go by himself takes the shot and it goes in the back of the net what a stonker from Igor Vettikelli this guy is on fire he's on absolutely huge goal scoring form for us does a little flip or a little cartwheel sorry and the number 14 gets ambushed by his teammates because that was a bloody peach of a finish let me tell you look at this takes it past uh, lots of blue shirts waits for the opening fires it into the top right hand corner Igor welcome back to the valley mate that was a lovely lovely goal bang top bins oh they found a nice little ball here through and it's going to be a goal for Henderson to equalize for Rochdale a nicely worked move they found the players with spaces a little step over there from the number 14 and just loads of space for him to drill across in and Deke still just the wrong side of his man Rochdale equalize the score is 1-1 oh lots of space here again where is Page his positional play is really bad and the ball floated in the header in and I might have just clipped the top of the bar there from the striker I think it was Clough yeah it was Clough there look at this leapt like a salmon did this clip the bar that is what I want to know Dylan Phillips leapt and I think it did just clip the bar but nonetheless the score remains 1-1. Half time then that half time whistle came very very suddenly let's have a look at the half time scores any important ones Sunderland winning they are direct promotion rivals we know that let's have a look at Scunthorpe they are also winning against Plymouth down there towards the bottom and yeah anybody on our tail not really Gillingham getting a good result there but another half of football to be played all across League One anyway oh they've given the ball away stupidly to Lanners not who you want to give possession to in this league here we go, it's Veta Kelly waiting for the run of Taylor. Taylor in the box now. Taylor scores! I was about to say shoots and misses, but he shoots and scores. And Lyle Taylor back on the goal scoring form again. Gives us a little love heart towards the camera. And the boys go and join in the celebrations with him. And we have put ourselves 2 1 up now. Look at the fans next to the Rochdale fans. A great contrast there of uh, moods of supporters. The number nine, nice finish finds the side netting when you find the inner side netting you know it's been a really good finish and Lyle Taylor makes up for uh, several missed shots over the last few weeks and months in this career mode with a lovely 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 finish oh rifled into the back of the net a finish to match Veta Kelly's earlier and the number 13 for them Arabas rifles a goal into the 
into the top right corner. The power on that was unbelievable and Rochdale leveled themselves again. Wasn't even commentating over this bit of play because I didn't see any immediate danger. Then the ball just fell there and bang past Dylan Phillips. What a strike from the lad. And Rochdale right back in this game again. Look at this from this angle now. Phillips just didn't quite get an arm out quick enough. I suppose that's a bit harsh on the strike there really because it was absolutely venomous. So 80 minutes played and we are going to bring on Mark Marshall and Ben Reeves for Diego Lanez and Jake Forstakowski. A little bit premature maybe for Colin Grant to come on but certainly in the next game or two Colin Grant will hopefully make his return. It's going to be a throw on. 91 minutes played we have one more chance to get this, uh, this game as a win rather than a draw. It's inside to Lyle Taylor again. Just as we need a really, really key pass, we don't manage to get one. And that, I think, is going to be full-time. Are we going to get the throw? No, that is full-time, guys. And we have drawn this game against Rochdale 2-2 away. Not a bad result, not a great result either. I feel like we could have won that one. And annoyingly, there was a world-class goal from Veta Kelly, first of all. And I was going to say, annoyingly, a world-class goal from uh, the... I can't remember who it was, but from Rochdale. Their second goal was an absolute worldie. So, yeah. Can't complain, 2-2 the final score, we take a point. Our striking partnership of Vettikili and Taylor played really well. There are 9.5 in a man of the match performance for Vettikili. He got an assist and a goal. Who got the other assist? It was actually Forster Kasky who he subbed off. He got an 8.7. Lanez got a 7.5. Everybody else on sixes and sevens. So yeah, not a bad performance from the squad, but we need to be picking up more points than this. So Scunthorpe were held to a draw and Sunderland actually won their game. So we are now down to fourth. Luton Town overtake us. We are still three points clear of seventh place and quite a way off of Scunthorpe United up there with 32 points and Sunderland with 31 now. So let's see what our next game is. So as you can see, we are advancing here through the final days of October. So let's stop this as we get into the 1st of November and just take a moment to give the player and goal of the month award. So there is actually a bit of a correlation between these two because the player scored the goal of the month and it was only in the last game that he did it. So yes, it is going to be Igor Vettikeli, my player of the month. And this goal right here, the absolute stonker in the last game against Rochdale does manage to get the top spot for my goal of the month. Here he is then, the Angolan striker slash left midfielder, 26 years old. And look at that overall in League One, 7.3, very, very way above average, four goals in 14 games, two assists as well. So fair play, Vettikeli, you are the October chart on Athletic Player of the Month. So in EFL, League One fixture against Doncaster Rovers is the opening game of the month of November. Let's get into Sim this one at the Valley. Again, we have stuck with our pretty much strongest lineup. Arebo comes back in as does uh, Patrick Bauer. Grant uh, just can't manage to worm his way back in the team due to the form of Taylor and Vettikeli so far. But let's see how this game pans out and maybe we can consider so there we go, Lyle Taylor puts us 1-0 up in the 27th minute and Veta Kelly, it doesn't look like Grant's getting back in this team anytime soon guys because Veta Kelly and Taylor have both scored 2-0 at the current score against Doncaster Rovers. Are there going to be any more goals in this game? A few subs made, Veta Kelly gets a brace in this one and we have pretty much, there, there we go, 90 minutes played, we have pretty much thrashed Doncaster Rovers to get a very, very prolific 3-0 result there. So guys, I know a lot of you have been suggesting that we get a youth academy set up at Charles and I think it's about time now that we do that because we're approaching the transfer window and we want, we want to see what kind of really good promising youngsters we can muster up before we identify any real transfer targets. I have already asked you in the last episode to start thinking about the kind of players that we want to bring in and the kind of positions we want to strengthen. But as you can see here, we have a transfer budget right now of 1.6 million with about 5,000 or 1.5, 1.6 million with about 5,000 uh, wage budget as well. So let's go over here to uh, where is the youth thing I think it's yeah here we go youth staff so we do have a youth staff option down here we need to hire a scout and we're going to pay like a middle of the road we're not going to spend too much on him I think maybe this two and three star Toby Bell from England uh, is is a good enough scout in order to not have too much of an impact on our transfer uh, budget but also be able to bring through some pretty decent players for us so with that said let's set up a scouting network where should we send him this is always the fun part uh, I think we're going to send him. Uh, why don't we go for a team that's not really good to try and have an impact on their on their international team as well? International players are always good. Uh, so yeah, let's let's just go to China, I suppose, for three months. What kind of player? I'm just going to go right now for any, and I think we're actually going to go for six months so that he can be quite prolific in bringing some players through. So there we go, Toby Bell off to China to bring in some youth players. I think we actually did have 
Hong Wan up until recently, who was a, I believe, Chinese youth prospect. I think he may have left the club in real life now, though. But we definitely do recruit from, from obscure countries, if you want to call China an obscure country. So there we go. Let's see if they can muster up any decent youth players. So our next game in the league is actually an away fixture at Fratton Park against Portsmouth. And I know a lot of you lot are going to want me to play this one as a match. So apologies if that means that we're cutting the episode a little bit short and not simming that final game. But I am going to say this one to be the first game that we play in the next episode so rather than play the game let's actually have a look at the squad rating so I haven't actually done this for a while gone through every individual player and seen uh, if they've grown at all since the beginning of the season so Vettikili over here at 70 pretty much the same Taylor I think may have gone down one actually it's actually quite early for him to start going down at 28 years old but he's been really good for us nonetheless Tariq Foss who's gone up by a couple uh, aribo has gone up by probably three or four as well. He's at 69 now, so he's going to be really good going forward. Fourth to at 68. Lanez has gone up by one to a 71. Still very, very young, so he he's probably going to be a player that we use all the way through to the Premier League if and when we get there. Deke still has gone up by quite a lot as well. And actually, Chris Solly can't get a game now due to the fact that Deke still has been playing so well. Patrick Bauer and Jason Pierce remain at 70 rated. Lewis Page may have gone up by one or stayed the same at 66. Everybody else down here, Saar's gone up by one. Uh, Cullen's gone up by one, but he's not a player. Grant's gone up by a fair few as well. Obviously, he's one of our main youngsters. Uh, nobody else. I think a few players have actually gone down as well, like Marshall, like I said, Taylor earlier as well. Uh, nobody else going up. I think uh, Muscle and Bloomberg have gone up by a few as well, but everybody else pretty much stay in the same. I think Bielik actually may have gone up by a few as well. But nonetheless, guys, that is going to be it for this episode. Make sure you tune in next time as we take on the mighty Pompey at Fratton Park. So, guys, make sure you leave a like on this one. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care of yourselves. I'll see you later, and sweet.